City strife, horses, chicks, and dogs, they are my neighbors. I cook and sun spin, and move the horses in to the barn, and time to move them out again. Red parchment pastures, beautiful park houses. The view I see each day when I arrive. This life pleases me. It is plain to see I'm living my bucolic life. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. So today I'm going to get started on a very special project to me. Um, this is going to be my mother of the bride dress. Now the wedding's not until October. It's early in the summer, but I want to just get it done. And this is not in any way going to be a traditional mother of the bride dress. It's more what I would want to wear. And so with that in mind, the pattern I am using is this one. Okay. It is a 1970s vintage wildly dramatic wrap dress okay and i'm going to be making a couple little tweaks to it as i usually do um, but i am going to be doing the full length version and instead of my sleeves looking like this i'm actually going to have a slit down the outside of my sleeve so that i have a little bit of arm showing there just the top of it and let me show you the fabrics that i'm going to be using there's actually two the first one, which is going to be the entire dress, is this, which is a crepe back satin, so it drapes really well. It's, I don't know, what is this? It's like not really forest green, not really emerald green. It's somewhere in between. It's like a magical, mystical green. I think it's really pretty. Then for the skirt, I'm also doing an overlayer um, over that crepe back satin of an embroidered fabric. If I can open this up, and you may have seen it, this is a Joann's fabric. Okay, but it is this, it's on a black um, tool, and it's got all of these flowers embroidered on it. And it is a border print, so I'll just be using the natural border print as the bottom of my skirt. I think it's gonna be really fun, um, and I've been, Loving this pattern for a long time, but I haven't bought it because it's been a bit overwhelming because it looks like it requires so much fabric. For example, my dress version that I'm going to be using here, if you have a 45 inch wide fabric, it calls for, in my size, 10 and a half yards. Okay, so there's a lot of fabric involved because it is a very big skirt. Um, and I have two layers. I have my overlayer too. So it's going to be, it's going to be pretty substantial when it's done. I have not even opened this yet. I'm guessing it's going to be more a traditional wrap dress with a big sash and everything, but that's what I'm thinking right now. I'm just going to set all of my fabric aside, open up my pattern, start taking things apart and see what I come up with. Okay, so before I've done anything here, I just looked at my pattern really quick and it is not a traditional wrap dress. It is a mock wrap dress, unfortunately. I like the real wraps a lot better because it's easier to adjust that whole center in everything. And the mock wraps, if you remember last year, I did a dress very actually looks like similar bodice. And I had to do all kinds of pattern alterations to make that work on my body. And so because of that, I am contemplating on changing this pattern from, and when I say mock wrap, um, what that means is instead of getting into the dress and having, you know, wrapping one side, wrapping the other, cinch it together somehow, tie a bow, 
instead of that being the way you get in, it's actually more of a traditional dress with a zipper in it. And it just looks like a ramp in the front, which is not what I want. So with that being said, I am going to change a lot about this dress. So if you've come here to see exactly how to make it this way, I'm really, really sorry, but I'm going to be changing it to a more of a traditional wrap dress. So I'm going to be omitting the zipper in the back and instead of, okay, this type of thing where they have you make your bodice, overlap them, sew them together so that they shall never ever come apart. I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to be making a skirt, sew it on and go for it that way because I'm already going to be modifying a few things. I am going to be modifying the skirt to fit my um, embroidered overlay. And so while I'm at it, I might as well just change everything. So anyhow, just to let you know, um, I will try to throw a link to that other dress that I did that was more along the lines of how this dress is. In case you really want to make it this way, you can look at that one. See everything I had to go through to modify the bodice and it looks like it's going to be put together about the same as that one. Okay. But all of that being said, I think I can use the pattern pieces the way that they are. If I don't, if I don't have to permanently attach them, I think I can use them the way that they are here. Pretty much, pretty much. I'll look at them once I have the tissue out. Um, I am going to be changing the sleeve, like I said, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. So yeah, okay, let me go ahead and get my tissue paper out. Okay, um, while I'm getting all of my pieces pulled out, lots of big skirt pieces, and I wanted to point out to find out the total length of your dress. It might come down from my size all the way down here. Finished back length from the base of the neck. For the long version I'm doing, it says 57 and 3 quarter inches, which is way too long for me. So as I am cutting out my pieces, I am going to be shortening every single skirt piece by four inches. So basically, if I get my little ruler here, I'm just going to line up the four inch mark, make a line and do that all the way across. Oops. And then come back and cut following those marks all the way across the bottom of each skirt piece. Okay, welcome back. It's actually been another day or so. And after I got all my pattern pieces cut out, I wanted to take a step away and just think about my process in my mind. Because although I'm not really changing the pattern pieces so much of the pattern itself, I am changing dramatically the way that this thing is going to be put together. And because this is going to be a real wrap dress and not a mock wrap dress, um, I was holding off on cutting out the skirt because it looks like the skirt has a lining piece which is more of a rectangle and their regular skirt pieces are more of like a circle skirt that you sew the panels together. And because I'm not putting a zipper in the back but instead doing a wrap over the front, I'm going to change a few things including the back skirt piece instead of cutting it in two separate pieces, I'm going to cut that on a fold. So I just have one big back piece, but because this is going to be a real wrap and on their pattern, they have um, just one piece. So basically they have a front piece. That's just a regular skirt. Okay. Because I'm going to have it being a wrap. I'm going to cut two front pieces out because I'm going to have an entire piece on the bottom layer and another entire piece on the top layer. So they'll both be overlapped by about half of a front piece, you know? And I'm pretty sure I have enough fabric for this. I'm really hoping I am. Um, we'll see. I am not going to do the lining just because my crepe back satin is so heavy. I just don't feel it's necessary, especially with the fact that I'm going to have a voluminous amount of fabric going on but I am going to be lining the bodice 
and I'm definitely changing my sleeve. And there is a message. So let me switch the camera down after I cut my skirt pieces out. And like I mentioned, the only thing I'm changing right now is on the back, I'm cutting it on a fold and I'm cutting two different skirt front pieces out, okay? Okay, so I pretty much got my skirt cut out. I've got a lot of smaller pieces I'm working on now. And I wanted to point out when I um, was cutting out the bodice front, there's a bodice front and there's a bodice front lining. The front has all these pleats. The lining has a dart, okay? I still haven't decided what fabric I'm using for my lining because I gotta wait and see how much I have left of this. If I don't have enough of this, then I'll use something else. But I wanted to point out for um, size 16, which is what I'm doing, they have a bust, a finished bust of 41 inches, okay? So that is just about what my actual bust is. And size 16 is made for a 38, I think. Um, but I can usually make it work, but not with this amount of ease. I don't want this front to be blowing open, you know, while my daughter's getting married, that could be a little distracting. So instead of a 16 at the top, I'm cutting out a size 18 on the top. That's just gonna give me an extra couple inches of ease and it's gonna be fine. Even though it is a wrap, I do have some adjustment that way, but I just wanted to point that out. Also, the way that I'm going to be doing my sleeve um, with it sliced down the middle, I'm cutting my sleeve piece, which is very large, into two pieces. So up here at the top of the sleeve, there's these little dots, and I have it folded at those dots so that my fold is pretty much parallel to the straight of grain here. And I'm looking for my scissors. This pattern is so huge. These skirt pieces and everything, it's so huge. You're gonna need a huge table or a floor to cut this out, just letting you know. Okay, so I'm just cutting this straight up the middle this way. And I'm going to cut out uh, two of each half. And that's actually going to help me because this sleeve is so wide. It's super, super wide. And working it in with the scraps that I have here, uh, finding p two pieces where I can cut those out, it's going to be difficult. But I think I can cut two half sleeves out. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I just wanted to point that out while I carry on. Okay, it's a new day here and I have everything cut out right now. Um, I ended up cutting the bodice lining out of a separate separate lining fabric because I did not have enough of this green, but that is fine. Um, and most of these directions are about the bodice and sleeves, but I am going to skip ahead and work on the skirt just because it's so big and I've got so much fabric up here that has to do with the skirt. I kind of want to get that done and over out of the way before I tackle the bodice. And of course, I'm doing my skirt very different from theirs, whereas their back, because it had a zipper in the back, is two separate pieces. One, mine is one cut on a fold. And also my front, seeing if they have a picture of the skirt front anywhere. Well, they have one, they have like side pieces, back pieces, front pieces, and side pieces, okay? I have a front piece, two of them cut out instead of one, because when I do my overlap, I need a front piece here and a front piece here, okay? So with that, um, I am just going to start making it. So I'm going to grab my center back, start at the center back and work my way around. It's basically going to end up being a very overly large circle skirt when I'm done. Okay, I was just looking at my pieces and realized I made a mistake and I don't have enough fabric to fix it. So here's the thing, um, the skirt here is Piece number four is the front, piece number five is the side, piece number six is the back. 
I cut two fronts, two complete fronts, a back on a fold, two of these, but I was supposed to cut four of these, four of these side pieces. And they are huge, and I literally just have scraps at this point. I don't have enough fabric for that. And so my choice is, you can see how full this skirt is. I can either measure everything and try to make the skirt with the fabric I have cut out, which is an option, or hold off and go back to the store and see if they have any more of this stuff on the bolt, you know? I don't even know, probably, because I don't think it's a big season for forest green crepe back satin, so. Um, but before I, I, cause my store, it's like an hour and a half drive from here and I, it's hot and I don't feel like driving. Um, I think that the best thing for me to do is just see if I can make this work with just two of these piece number fives. Because I'm gonna have an overskirt on top of it, of this. And so that's gonna be adding extra bulk anyway. So it's gonna actually be looking like that, okay? So let me measure it, let you know what I come up with and I'll be right back. Okay, I think it's going to work. So if um, I have a complete wrap going on here, okay? So I have a back piece here, two front pieces, and these two are going to overlap, so I'm only gonna measure one of those. And then, well, this is very out of proportion, but I have a side piece here and a side piece here. When I added it together, one of my front pieces was a little over 12 inches. Okay, so I'll put 12 plus. My back was 13 inches, and each side was also 12 inches. Okay, so that's, Two of those is 24 inches, and two of those is 25 inches. So that gives me, at my waistline, 49 inches, which is way plenty and is still gonna give me a whole lot of gathers up there, okay? And I will be able to put my overlay on it and everything like that. So my front, these two are gonna end up being on top of each other, so that's why I only measured those once or counted that in my addition here. So I think it's gonna be fine. We're just going completely off script here because, you know, I'm using their pattern, but putting it together all kinds of different ways. So again, let me get my back pattern piece to start with. Um, this is the side. And see, I should have read it because it says skirt, side, front, and side, back. And I'm just so used to cutting out two of everything that I completely missed that it says cut for right here. But I didn't have enough fabric to cut for anyway, so such is life. Okay, this is my skirt back piece. So just letting you know, I am going to be completely surging around each and every piece as I look for a pin cushion somewhere. Um, and these should match up straight down each side. If I'm paying attention when I remove my pattern piece of what side is supposed to be attached to which part of my skirt, I think I'm gonna be okay. Uh, you can see there's a little crease there. Because my finished skirt is gonna end up being so huge, after I serge around each piece, but before I sew them together, I am gonna press my fabric just to get these, you know, creases and everything out of it now because pressing the entire thing at once is gonna, you know, go all the way over my ironing board and everything. And I'll be pressing my seams, but just pressing a seam is a little, a lot less cumbersome than pressing all of the fabric on a huge circle skirt. So, without all that being said, I'm using black thread on my serger. I'm gonna serge all the way around this center back piece, which was cut on a fold, and I will be right back. Okay, so this is my back. It is serged and ironed, and just to keep things straight, I am pinning little labels the very top of each one of these pieces until I have it all together so I know exactly what I'm dealing with. So I'm just gonna put this aside for a minute and get my two side pieces out and do the same thing where I just serge around them. 
They should be the same on either side because you're sewing, they want you to sew two together. So I will keep track of which one is supposed to be attached to the back side and put a, a little pin or something on that. But let me get them surged and I will meet you back here. And as I'm pulling this pattern off, they are the same. They've got the same shape, the same notch markings and everything. So I don't need to worry about making sure, you know, one side or the other is sewn together. So I'm just not going to. Okay, so I've got my two sides. This is one of them labeled, surged around. And I'm going to go ahead and get them sewn onto my back piece. So I'll show you on this first one. I'm going to just match it up. It should match up exactly. Um, just, of course, putting right sides together. So um, I am matching it up, you know, completely on my side seams from the top to the bottom. Sewing this at 5 8 7 inch. And then I'm going to come back and press that seam allowance open. That's how I'm going to do it for this seam and all of the other seams for the skirt. They should all match up really well. Um, I need to go ahead and get some appropriately colored thread over onto Rosie. She's the machine I'm going to be using today. Okay, so at this point I have my three panels sewed together. This is my back, my two sides. My seam allowance is pressed open can see. Okay. Um, I need to go ahead and do the same thing to my two front pieces, serge around them, and then stitch them along these sides here. I will be labeling my fronts too until I have it all together because things happen. Uh, so let me go ahead and get that done because putting on this uh, overskirt, that's going to be a trick. Okay. So at this point, I've got my two fronts here. My two sides and my back. Very big skirt. It's going to be wild. Um, I need to figure out how I'm going to be dealing with this overskirt. And the thing is, this, it has the border print. Um, this is going to be the lower hem down here. And I don't want to cut this into panels. I want to leave it one big long length. And I believe I got two and a half yards of it. Oh, I see a little tear right here. You see that? Well, I'm going to be cutting off more than that anyway. But what I'm thinking is I am going to gather this. First, I have to cut it to the right length um, because this border print should be taller than my skirt. Let me move this camera out a bit here. So this is the bottom of my fabric and I'm probably going to have about a one inch hem. So I'm just going to go ahead and turn that up and pin it while I am guessing at things here. This is one of my front edges. Okay. So if I place a cut edge of my embroidered panel over here so that it is I have a few inches down below that I can just trim because it is just a tool I'm not going to be hemming this so I'm just going to be laying it so that the embroidered part is just a little bit above where my finished length is going to be okay so putting that there like that, I want to see where it's going to hit up here. Okay. So with all of that, just spreading it out, you can see this is a lot longer. Well, you can't see it because it's off camera, but hang on a sec. Let me move it all down again. Okay. So this is where it's hitting up here. I'm just going to pin it in place really quickly. So I have this much extra. All right. So that's what I'm going to be needing to cut off of my um, overlayer layer. So if I put my ruler here right at the cut edge of my blue or green and come up here, I am going to be taking off 16 and a half inches. And just so I don't have to read my ruler that carefully, I'm just going to get a little piece of tape 
and put that over here on my ruler at that 16 and a half inch point. Okay, take it off my skirt. And I need to cut that off the very top edge here. Okay, so we're just going to do this a little bit at a time. Place the ruler here and make a cut. Move the ruler down some more and I'm keeping, there you go, keeping that little tape I put on at the edge. You can see where the bottom is here and then make more cuts to match up with the ruler. Move the whole thing down and just keep on going to take the top part off of here. Okay, so I'm going to be gathering this. So I'm going to need to run some gathering up at the top unless I decide to pleat it, which could work because I'm going to have to run gathering stitches when I'm gathering this one. Um, if, just we're going to think out loud here, if I pleated it, I could pleat it in the spots that did not have as much embroidery maybe? Maybe? Huh. No, I think gathering it's going to be the way to go. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to start my gathering threads about two inches in on each side. I'm going to leave this much without gathering threads because I'm going to need that for finishing the front edge here. Okay. So let me pull this tape off here and stick it on here where I want my threads, gathering threads to start. One right there and the other on the corresponding part of the other side here. And last but not least, I don't feel like doing that tonight. So I'm actually going to call this a night with this project. I know it feels like I haven't done too much today. I've been busy with other stuff. Um, but at least I got the skirt sewn together and I have a game plan with this. Good morning and welcome to the next day. So I went ahead and put in one row of gathering stitches. You know, where, where is it? Where is it? Up here, fairly close to the top edge because it doesn't take much to gather tool, which is basically, this is like illusion netting. You know, it's really nice. But while I was doing it, I was thinking of actually changing my overall plan where my overskirt isn't going over everything, but is only coming around to the sides to right here. Okay, so the overskirt is kind of like that. Uh, let me go grab a pattern so I can show you what I'm thinking. Kind of like this, but not exactly. This is just like a separate overskirt that attaches over. A sheath dress, okay, like that. Um, which I could do. I could do that. Hmm. Hmm. Let me give this a think. See, what I'm thinking is I do have this big sash that I'm going to be making. And that sash, it's going to be about that wide. And I could use that sash, like this pattern uses just like a little ribbon kind of belt thing to attach their little skirt to. I could do that. And then, so basically I would make my dress just out of the satin and then have the skirt, overskirt be separate. So I could take it off if I didn't want it. I'm going to go ahead and go with that plan, I think. I like that idea. So what that means is I am going to take a hiatus from the skirt for a minute and get this sash put together so I can see how this is going to work on the sash. And that way, if it's not going to work, I can take it back out and put it onto the skirt and we'll act like nothing ever happened. So that's my plan. Um, when I was cutting out my sash, there are two gigantor pieces and I was a little short on fabric. So one of my pieces is about that much too short. I'm just going to average it out. It's going to be fine. So let me get those over here and we'll work on that. Okay, so I've got my big sash piece here. There's two of them and 
so this is 13 inches deep so by the time I fold it in half do a seam allowance it's going to be about a six inch sash which is kind of cool I've got two of these cut and I need to sew them end to end first so let me get this pattern out of the way okay so first thing I'm going to do is put my two end pieces right side together like this. I'm not surging it because everything's going to be flipped in on itself anyway. Sew it at 5 8 inch down here and press that seam allowance open. Okay, so this is actually the center point here on my sash and I just kind of held this up behind me and pulled it around and put my fingers where I wanted it to end. And when I measured that distance it was 25 inches. So if I want to divide that in half I'm going to put 12 and a half inches on each side. Okay, so let me go ahead and get that marked also. Let's see here, 12 and a half is right here. So that is this position. And I'll do the same on the other side. Okay, so I got those marked, but before I actually gather the skirt onto this, I'm going to hem up the very side edges of this. Um, I think I'll just do a tiny little narrow hem. So like this is my edge right here. And what I'm going to do is basically turn it under and turn it under again and then just run the machine down that edge. I'm going to try to press it because it looks like where the embroidery is, it wants to be thicker than the other spots. Hmm, that could be a problem. Change my mind. I am just going to adjust my serger and do a little surged edge down here with a little, you know, narrow surged edge. I think that that will be fine because I think that if I try to hem it like this, I'm going to be going fat to thin to fat to thin and it's going to get a little bit wonky, you know? So let me do that, see how it looks and I'll be right back. Okay, let me show you that edge. Basically, I can't see that. Makes like a little surged rolled hem type of an edge, you know? And I think that that's going to work out for me unobtrusive and all that but it's going to keep all of this embroidery contained so with that I'm going to go ahead and gather this onto my skirt so I have the center point of this marked um, right here okay so I'm going to put my right side of my embroidery with the right side of my skirt matching that center point here. Let me pull this tape off. And stick it in real well so it's not going to go anywhere. Then I can match up my edge over here with that pin. And remember, I only have my gathers started like an inch or so beyond that. So this will be flat and then gathers, and I think that's good. So let me put another pin over here where my gathers are actually starting. And just to make my life easier, I'm also going to find the midpoint here and all of this stuff right here. Okay, so matching this midpoint to this midpoint and put that right here. Okay, I'll do the same on the other side. Get my pin in, pull my gathering threads and get all of this um, gathered up so it's going to lay nice and flat right here. Okay, so I've got it pinned on here. Kind of cool. Can you even see that? There you go. And I'm just going to go over to my sewing machine and while looking at this side, I'm going to stitch down the top here, probably at about three eighths of an inch or so seam allowance, being very careful to make sure my gathers are laying nice and flat as I go. 
um, to get that sewn on into place. Okay, so I just tied it on here. You know, I still have to fold it in half and all that stuff just to see what it looks like. I think it's pretty cool. I am going to go with it. I like it a lot. So yeah, that's going to be my skirt, um, overskirt. So that means that it's going to be a lot simpler just making the regular dress. Whoops, almost knocked her over. Oh, with just the single layer. So let me go ahead and get this sash finished up. Okay, so this is the right side of my fabric. And I'm basically going to be machine sewing. Oh, I need to raise you up again. Hang on. Okay, so I am basically going to machine sew either end, but not the middle. I'll just hand sew the middle. So on each end, just going to fold it in half. Oops, two pins there. And from the point where all of my fabric extra is here, okay, I will probably sew with my machine over, ooh, I had a tension issue there. I will need to fix that, but I will be sewing it with my machine from right about here, so locking in like the first inch of that, okay, at 5 eighths of an inch all the way over and up. And I'm going to do that on both sides, but leave this part open. Okay, so with that done, I'm just going to clip a bit off of the corners. Not a whole lot. Staying about an eighth of an inch away from my stitching. And I'm going to flip these outside. Tie parts right side out. Thankfully, they're big enough. I can just stick my hand in there and pull. Okay. And then pull out these little corners here. Uh, okay. That looks pretty good. Let me get a little pin just to pull out the rest of this corner. There you go. Okay, so I will of course be pressing this, but that's the size of my tie. I'm gonna do the same thing to the other side over here. Okay, so I've got the sides flipped right side out, not pressed yet. And to deal with all of this in the middle here, I'm just going to kind of do it by hand where I'm going to turn that edge under a about five eighths of an inch and flip it so that it covers that stitching line. And I can kind of see the back layer of fabric through there. And I'm pinning it up so that the fold on the front is matching up with the fold on the back. All the way across here, getting everything tucked in. And I am just going to hand stitch this with like an invisible kind of hand stitch going all the way across. Um, needle and thread. Take my time. It's only 25 inches long, so it's not going to take that long. So the way that I'm sewing this, um, it's very simple. I got my thread coming out. Oopsie, right here it's coming out. Just going down into that bottom layer about a fat eighth of an inch. And then coming up and just catching, come on, focus for me. Just catching a thread or so here. Oopsie. Don't know why that is so long there. Hang on. Pull it up to the top and do it again. Go down about a fat eighth of an inch. Come up and just catch a thread or so. Like that and then go back down. So I'm just going to do that all the way across. Good morning. Welcome to the next day. So yesterday turned into quite an ordeal of a day for me. So I didn't get back to this, but I am today. Um, before I move on to the bodice, I am going to go ahead and do the hemming on this skirt. And the first part is um, where I have the front edges like that. I'm just going to do a, 
Let me see, where is it? Here's one. A narrow hem down it. So, basically, press it at 5 8 7 inch, turn it in, you know, like that. And I'm just going to edge stitch it down here. And I'm going to do that for both sides. Okay, so I got that done. This thing is so big. Let me see if I can find that side. Okay, so this is what the side hem looks like now. You know, just a little edge. For the bottom, because it is basically a circle skirt, so I do have a curve to deal with. Not, not huge, but a little bit of a curve. I want a nice substantial hem, so I'm going to use wide stretch lace. I have it in my stash. I think this one is from 1969. Isn't that great? Nice old notions. So the way that I'm going to sew this on, I'm looking at the right side here. And on my stretch lace, there is this line right here. Okay, you see that? That's going to be my stitching line. And as I sew it, I'm just going to lay it so that these little scallops are just on top of my edge. And I'm going to stretch it just a bit as I sew. So I'm not going to pin it on ahead of time, okay? But because I'm going to stretch it as I sew, it's going to want to gather it just slightly, which is going to help me when I turn it over to him. Okay, so I have my lace sewn on. It took two different packs. They're two different brands, but they're both black and wide, so... You know, there's this one here, and down towards the other end it looks different, but you get the idea. Um, what I'm doing is pinning it up, and I got these hem clips a long time ago, but I haven't really had the reason to use them, so now I am going to. As you can see, it kind of is folding in because it's gathered a bit here, and it's not a whole lot when I stretch it. I just barely stretch it. So you don't want to stretch it too hard or else, you know, your gather's going to be too extreme. So I'm just going to pin one section at a time, and I am going to be hand stitching this um, along the very top edge up here. I've finally gotten down to the end here, and I just wanted to show you I am stitching this lace to the edge here, okay, let's see, just going to go invisibly down this whole edge so it's going to lay nice and flat. And then I'm going to run over to my ironing board and press it really well. Okay, I've got that skirt pressed and just kind of put the side on a table over there. And I need to get started with this bodice. So, like I've said several times already, I'm doing my bodice construction very different from the pattern. And one of the main reasons is um, when you're doing a wrap top and they are basically having you sew it, wrap it, sew it into the waistband so it is in a set position. That wrap is not going to move. It is what it is. And I know from experience that my body shape does not match the standard that they use when they're figuring out how the wrap should be. And again, I will reference in you to the pumpkin dress if you want to see everything I had to do to make this type of a wrap work. And basically, I had to extend it much lower. I had to redo where the uh, pleats were and everything. And the bodice for that dress is extremely similar to this. So, you know, just look at that if you want to. Um, what I'm going to be doing is I am going to be lining it. And I did cut out um, this. It is... Oh my gosh, I forgot the name of it. It's the, the lining that I use all of the time, and I can't remember the name of it, but it's a very nice quality lining. <laughs> I'll look it up later. Anyway, the lining piece for the bodice is has darts, and even though I cut it out according to the pattern, I'm actually going to modify uh, where these darts are pointed. Instead of having them point here, I'm going to have them point here which means I'm going to lower this and lower the direction of that. I'll show you that shortly. I just wanted to point out all the pieces that I have. 
And this is the back. The back has uh, pieces cut out of the fashion fabric and the lining fabric, okay? Now, like a lot of very plungy wrap dresses, we are probably going to see quite a bit of cleavage here, you know? That's what the model has. And I, at this point, don't know if I'm going to be comfortable showing that much cleavage at the wedding or not. If I get to the end and I'm not, my idea is this um, that I cut off here, that I would make a not terribly, hang on a sec, I've got cotton a pin over here. I wanted to show you the right side of this. Okay, it's not, it's not gonna be opaque. You'll still be able to see through it, but make a little panel out of this with the little embroidered flowers to go along right here. And I'm not sure if I'm gonna do that right now or not. I'm gonna have to wait till the very last thing to see how it looks. If I get done and it looks like I need a little something extra to cover up in there, great. If not, I'll just be extra daring that day, you know, which could also be fun. And of course my sleeves, I did, instead of one big sleeve piece, I did cut it in half. And so I'm gonna have a little slit going down here showing off side arm, which I think is gonna be fun. So with all of that, um, I'm gonna need to get started here. So, looking at our pattern piece, piece page one is this, we're going to be starting here on page two. And where they say to stay stitch, I'm still going to stay stitch. Where they say to gather, I'm still going to gather. All of that is going to stay the same. So, it looks like I'm going to need to start with my piece number one. Good morning and welcome to the next day. So I wanted to show you that I'm gonna get started on my back piece. And in the pattern, they are having you cut two separate back pieces. I'm cutting one on the fold, but I wanna show you the adjustment I made. I have my regular fabric and my lining fabric here. Bember Grayon, that's the word I was looking for. My lining is Bember Grayon um, because I'm cutting it on a fold. I actually, if you can see, have my fold set in about five eighths of an inch to make up for where that seam allowance would be. But also, because I wanted to go a slightly larger size, and I had already cut out my pattern, my back piece at a size 16, whereas I cut my front bodice piece out at a size 18, just to give me a little bit extra here, I went ahead and bumped this side seam out about five eighths of an inch. So that's going to give me the extra width of a size 18 on the back bodice. Um, but I will be putting these darts exactly where they are on the pattern. And because this is going to be a fully lined bodice, I'm not surging around the pieces. I don't think that that's really necessary. But since these are going to be exactly the same, the, the lining and the regular fabric, I thought I would start with this just because, you know, get it out of the way. So, like usual, I do need to mark my pattern when I'm looking for scissors. There's some scissors. So I'm going to go ahead and make a couple little notches here for my sleeve, the one up here at the shoulder. Down here at the bottom, I'm not making that one just because my skirt is so different from their skirt. Um, over here, the side, seam, the side seam is what it is, but I'll make it anyway. The main part here is all of this, which is for the dart. And I need to make sure I make these marks on the right side of my fabric. I mean, sorry, on the wrong side of my fabric. Don't put them on the right side of your fabric. But I'm gonna go ahead and punch out the circle from my tissue paper here first. That one up at the top and following it down. That one and this one down here. And there is also a mark up here for a sleeve, okay? So let me go ahead and transfer all of this over to the right side of my fabric. 
I'll show it to you on the lining because it will show up better. So I'm just placing this over here. Okay, with the understanding that I do have my little bit bumped out there. I'm gonna put my dot up here for that sleeve position. This one here and these two down here. And to make it easier, I am connecting my dots and I am using my heat erasable pen and it will disappear, so we're not worried about that. So let me make these same markings on both sides of both pieces of fabric. Okay, so now that I have them marked, I'm gonna go ahead and pin them. Putting a pin down in one little dot here. Come on, come back up in the other side. Push that through. Up here at the very top, I'm gonna pinch it and put it down, smooth it out. And put this little pin here and this one to anchor it down here. And I'm gonna put one in the middle also. Making sure that it's still matched up correctly. Okay. Now when I go to sew this, I'm gonna start down here at the edge here, come all the way up to the top. And I'm gonna do that for uh, both of my lining and my fashion fabric. Okie doke, so that is done. And while I was over there, I did the stay stitching around the neckline, which is a row of straight stitching at a half inch seam allowance, just to keep it from getting misshapen. So these being pretty much done, I'm just gonna set them aside and then we're gonna get started with the front pieces because they're a little bit different. Okay, so this is my front piece and lots of stuff going on here. Um, and I'm gonna need to mark a bunch of it. I want to point out a couple things. First of all, if you're going to be doing the version that the pattern has where you fold them over each other and sew them in place, make sure you double check all of this before you finalize everything. Because the pumpkin dress that I did, I had to do a lot of manipulation to these pleats. So they are going to have you sew them up these lines. It looks like I'm probably not. I'm probably just going to pinch them. Um, but just, you know, giving you a heads up that way. But at this point, I'm not worrying about the pleats. They will be marked on the right side of the fabric. Okay, not like a dart. So I need to make sure that when the time comes, I have this piece handy and I will mark that then. What I'm gonna deal with right now is I'm gonna be putting a row of stay stitching down this whole bias cut area so that it doesn't wanna stretch out of shape, starting at the bottom and going up on each side. And again, that's like the other one where it's a half inch row of straight stitching. Uh, while I am here, I'm gonna go ahead and clip my notches. Now I cut my bodice at the size 18, so I'm clipping those notches here. And I'm not clipping this one because my skirt is so different from their skirt. That's not gonna be an issue. When I mark the pleats, I will put a mark where the center front should be just so I have that to be aware of. On the sleeve, I'm gonna go ahead and clip this one. Um, just like before, I will be punching out my circles with this, which is the one up here. And when it comes time to do the pleats, I'll need circles here. Um, but again, I'll deal with that later. The other thing, actually I do, I do need to clip these notches because I need to put rows of gathering stitches between these two notches, okay? That's gonna be part of the making the fullness for the bust area here. So on each of these pieces then, a row of straight stitching here at half inch seam allowance, two rows of longer gathering stitches between these two notches, and I'll be right back. Okay, so with that stay stitching in and this gathering 
in right here. I'm not pulling anything yet. I'm going to go ahead and sew my front to my back at the shoulder seams before I start dealing with the lining. So I know that's slightly out of range here. Hang on a second. All right. I'm going to be sewing these shoulder seams up here at a 5 8 inch seam allowance both sides over here too and then press that seam allowance open. Okay now for this bodice lining. First of all this is going to be on the inside so it's not really going to be that visible but I still want these darts to be a little closer to my actual body size than not so I need to lower the apex so I'm going to do it by one inch. So here's the dot that should be with my size. I'm centering my ruler here halfway down the little, the little notch for it here. And I'm going to make another dot one inch lower. Okay. And then from that dot that I just drew, I am going to following the lines that should go with that size. I'm going to go ahead and draw some new lines from my lower dot and that's going to make this. <clears throat> I'm not lowering this. I'm not doing all that pattern manipulation because I want the final size to be the same as the bodice front of the fashion fabric. Okay. So instead of punching out this dot up here, I will punch it there. Now over here, this is the size. Um, this is a little bit different because usually I line up my straight of grain here so I can lower it directly. My straight of grain is on the bias. So I'm just eyeballing it on my grid of my, my cutting board here. So it kind of is straight according to this, this start here. Okay. And with that, this is my size 18 dot. Ah, uh, that looks pretty good. I'm just going to lower it by one inch also right there. Okay. So I've just drawn a new dot and again, connecting to where, look at these, these are really confusing over here, aren't they? This is the one that I'm aiming for here. And this is the one I'm aiming for here. I'm just going to draw some new lines. If when I get this sewn in the side seam doesn't match up exactly, that's okay. And what I mean by that is where these little angles are, when you fold a dart, those are cut out like that so that when you fold it, everything stays lined up. Because I'm altering the angle here, it might stick out just a little bit. I'm not going to care about that at all. So with all of that being said, what I need to do is just like I did with the back, sticking this just under my tissue paper. So I don't cut my fabric, punch out, oops, punch out the circles um, up at the top and down at the bottom of each one of these little legs. Put my pin through, color in those dots with my ruler, draw in the legs, and then I'll sew the darts together. So I've got them both drawn on and I'm pinning them just like I did for the bottom darts. I mean the back darts. Okay. And I'm going to sew them just like the back where I start at the outside edge and come in. Once I have them sewn, you need to press the side dart down and the bottom dart towards the center. Okay. So let me go ahead and get all of this done and I'll be back. Okay. So these are my front bodice pieces now. Got my dart sewn in, got them pressed. This one pressed down. This one pressed towards the center and this bimper ground is extremely light. It's like silk light. So it just kind of floats down and just like the other ones, I'm going to go ahead and put the shoulders together front and back. Sew them at five eighths of an inch and then press these seam allowances open. Okay, I wanted to mention while I was over there, I did run a row of stay stitching down the front diagonal edge of my lining also. So now I need to go ahead and get my lining attached to my bodice here. So I can't show you the whole thing on the camera because 
if I get close enough so you can see the detail, you can't see everything. And if I'm far enough that you can see everything, you can't see the detail. So we have to kind of do a happy medium here. I'm putting them right side together and I'm only going to be dealing with the neckline area right now. So with my pins over, I'm going to be starting at each shoulder seam and also down here at the very bottom. Hopefully everything's going to match up very, very well. That would be great and it looks like this will. When I go to stitch it, I'm going to stitch it at 5 8 of an inch, which is going to be just outside of my stay stitching. So hopefully the stay stitching will not show. But yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and put this shoulder seam over here. Hopefully that back will match up because I cut them out the same, you know. So starting at the bottom here, coming up around and all the way down at 5 8 of an inch. All right, so I've got them sewed together here and I need to do a row of understitching. But before I do that, I'm going to be clipping around the curved part of my back neckline. And hopefully you can see this is an extremely wide neckline. Um, the area for the shoulders is going to be actually pretty, pretty narrow. Let me see if I can see it on this picture. Where it's coming very far, far down the collarbone area here. Okay, so it's just going to be a little bit of a shoulder there before you go into the big sleeve. So just be aware of that. And I am clipping up to my stay stitching line, which is about an eighth of an inch shallower than my stitching line. Okay, and from here it's pretty much straight the rest of the way down. So the way that I'm going to understitch it then is open this up and I'm going to put all of my seam allowance sticking out underneath the lining side. Okay, so starting down here, it's going to be a row of straight stitching just on the lining side over here and make sure that you're going all the way through the seam allowances on the bottom. Okay, so starting here, I'm going to go up and all the way around to the other side. All right, so over here at my ironing board now, I'm going to press this. So just starting over here, flipping the lining side underneath and as carefully as I can, making a nice little pressed edge all the way around the entire neckline. Okay. So the idea is that when I'm all done, all of the stitching, the lining is going to be hidden down here, even though it's a different color, it's going to be hidden. And I don't know if you can see that the fashion fabric is going to want to curve slightly towards the bottom side. Maybe you can see right there. Okay. And that gives a really nice finished edge. So let me go ahead and press all the way around. Okay. So welcome back to the next day. Um, the first thing I need to do is get these pleats marked and I didn't do it ahead of time because I was afraid that while I was pressing everything I would erase my marks anyway. So what I'm going to do is over here and just punch out a little circle at the top of each one of these little pleat marks here and then again, oh, at about three eighths of an inch from the bottom of each one. I'm going to do the same thing, you know, like that. So I have two marks to connect when I draw my lines. So let me go ahead and get this marked and I'll show you how I mark it on my fabric. Okay. So with them punched out, I'm just laying this over my fabric, matching up the cut edges here. Put a little dot in each one of these and um, this last one here, you can't see, but it's right at that fold. So I'm going to ignore that, but just knowing that at the fold right here, that's where this top one is coming to. So keeping this handy, I'm going to go ahead and draw these lines just because that's going to make it easier to see for me. And these do kind of crisscross here. So, you know, be aware of that. Almost done. 
Okay, and on the pattern page, whoops, where the arrow is, that's going to show you the direction. So I'm just going to start up here at the top. Let me open this up a bit here. So this line here that kind of crosses over at the bottom, which is this one, I'm just going to fold it there and it comes over to this fold right up here. Okay, so I'm just going to pin that in place at the top and bottom and the little zigzag down here is going to line up. All right, the next line, which is this one here, is it? Yes, it is. It is going to come over and match up over here. And they're going to kind of just pile up on top of each other. All right, so just be aware of that. We're just going to have a pile of pleats down here in the corner here. All right, the last one here, I'm folding it along this line and it comes over here. So up at the top, it's kind of like a fan where you can see each layer, but down at the bottom, they're pretty well just stacked up. And that is about it. Okay, so let me get these pinned into place. And I am going to come back and baste this edge. Come on, pin for me. So that's what it looks like. I'm going to need to do the same thing on the other side. But underneath here, I can see a little better. I'm just going to baste across there to hold all of those little folds in place together. And then give it a, a really quick press just at the bottom here. Not all the way up, but just at the bottom to get the beginnings of these pleats to want to stay where they should. Okay, so this is what that looks like. All right, those are my little folds. You can see that things not lining up quite exact down here at the bottom. So I'm just gonna trim those that are not behaving out of the way so that everything else is pretty much flat at the bottom. Okay, and I've just pressed about that far up just so those pleats can get started knowing where they belong. So now what I need to do is get both of my sides of my fabric together and there are some gathering stitches here that I'm going to need to pull but first of all I'm going to start pinning with this outside edge this is the bottom of course here I'm going to pin it up to where these gathering threads start and then move the whole thing over and pin this corner over here to the lining what I do on this side, of course, I will do to the other side also. Okay, and I'm going to pin it to the lining up to this notch here, which is where my gathering threads start. You know what? I'm going to stick an extra pin in the middle just because I can. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is pull these gathering threads. It doesn't look like there's a whole lot to pull, honestly, um, just so that this is going to lay nice and flat here. Ah, so, well, let me just tug and um, get these gathers, you know, somewhat centered, evenly spaced, pinned down. And I think what I'm going to do is once I have that, I'm just going to go ahead and stitch, you know, at about a quarter inch seam allowance just across the bottom of both sides, just to get that part kind of anchored in place before I work the rest of this. Okay, so I've got that on. This is kind of a pain, just letting you know. But that is on. So now what I'm going to do is match up the back. And I got spots on the lining here. I hope it's just water or something it's going to evaporate it doesn't go through to my green fabric I don't know what that is honestly mm. but I'm going to go ahead and match up the bottom edge and do the same thing get it pinned together and then just stitch straight across here and then I'm going to worry about the sides and the armhole okay so now that it's stitched on the bottom here I need to do a little tension adjustment again 
Um, I need to work on these sides and this should match up pretty much exactly. So I'm just going to be careful, pin it all the way around here, matching up this shoulder seam here. And then again, if you can see, I'm just stitching it at about a quarter inch seam allowance from the raw edge. And I'm going to do that down both of my sides. And then this should be functioning as a single unit from that point on. I want to show you because of understitching and the way that, you know, everything folds and all, I do have a little more of my lining peeking out over here at this side. That's fine. I'm just going to sew a quarter inch from the cut edge of my fashion fabric. And then after I am done with all of this sewing around, I'm going to come back and serge these raw edges just with my black serging thread just to, you know, encase everything so that it's not going to fray on me. It'll look not neater. But when I do that, I'll just cut off the out extra lining that's peeking out there. Okay, so I've got it, you know, surged around the edges just to keep it contained and nice and neat. I think it's going to be actually really cool. Um, I'm going to go ahead and sew up these side seams just at a regular 5 8 inch seam allowance and then press them open. Okay, I've just pinned the bodice here on my dress form just, you know, to get it out of the way because I need to start working on the sleeves, but I think it's really cool. As you can see, it's a very dramatic neckline, you know, we love that. And the back is laying really nice all of that. So one of the reasons that I really wanted to change this pattern to make it a real wrap and not a mock wrap is because I have the flexibility to move these over as I see fit to fit my actual body and to make this cross where it needs to cross. When you do the other style that the pattern was intended where this is sewn as one complete unit, it is what it is and you have to be extremely careful in the pre-planning to make sure that all of your pieces are exactly the right size and everything. And uh, I just didn't want to deal with that. So I think it's looking pretty cool. I'm going to leave this here for a minute while I start to work on my sleeves. Okay, so I'm going to be doing my sleeves very different from the pattern. And as you can see, I cut my sleeve in half. Okay. And debating, I think what I'm going to do first is just serge around these. So I have two pieces for each sleeve and I'm going to make a note that these pieces over here are my back pieces. So actually instead of writing on it, just for right now, I'm just going to stick one of these little pins in the back corner of the back part of my sleeve. These are the front part of my sleeve. And I'm just going to keep all of this handy, this pattern piece handy, so I can transfer markings after. But with that done, I'm going to serge just around the raw edge of all four pieces of my sleeve. Okay, so with them all serged around, this one has a pin, so I know that's a back piece. This does not, so I know it's a front piece. So I'm just going to place them right sides together and up here at the top for the first three inches, I'm going to sew it together. I'm going to put a pin here at that three inch point um, at five eighths inch seam allowance just from the very top to that point on both of my sleeves. Okay, so over here at my ironing board, this is where things are going to get even more different. I am going to press open my tiny little seam up here. Okay, and then below that, I'm going to continue to press it so that I have a fold at about that 5 8 inch seam area. So I'm just going to hold that open. If it's a little bit more, a little bit less, that's okay. I'm not fogging up my camera. Okay, so I'll do the same thing on this side, but what I also need to do is come back and tuck it in one more time. And I guess I can do it all the way up here. Okay. 
and I don't keep my iron set very high. I keep it kind of at a synthetic setting so that I'm never in risk of, you know, melting anything because that's never fun. So, you know, I'm going to do the same thing on both sides of both sleeves, but I'm going to come back then and just edge stitch this all the way up. And so on this side, you're going to see a row of stitching. That's fine. I'm just going to edge stitch it all the way up, over, and then back down on this side. Okay, so I have that done. So this is what it's going to look like. I have it open from that point down. This is where the opening of my cuff is going to be. Okay, so these are going to come together. That's where I'm going to button it closed. The stitching, I just ran all the way to the top and over. You know, it's going to work out just fine. So let me get my other sleeve exactly the same way. And um, then we're going to have to put some gathering stitches in up here. All right, so back here at the table, I'm just marking where my notches are. So this is my front side. It has a single notch. And my back side has a double notch. And I'm just going to mark it right in the middle of the two notches or thereabouts um, on my back. So if I th really think about this, I actually made my sleeve cap up here about an inch narrower than it originally was. So with that, if I have trouble getting this to fit in my armhole, what I can do is just come down and stitch it a little bit lower. And when I'm working to set it into my sleeve, we can deal with that at that point, okay? Um, also, there are going to be gathering stitches put in at the bottom. I'm gonna do that in a separate step. So the first thing I'm gonna do is on both of these sleeves, between my two notches, I'm gonna run two sets of gathering stitches. And I should not have to cinch these in much at all because from what I can tell on the images on the pattern, it's just a set in sleeve. It's not a gathered sleeve, so there shouldn't be a lot to deal with up there, okay? So let me just get those put in the way I usually do and I'll be right back. Okay, so with that in, hopefully you can see my rows of stitching. Um, I need to go ahead and sew this side seam together over here. So for both of my sleeves, I need to move my little pin that's marking my back out of the way so I won't get it caught. And just pin these together here. Uh, sew it at 5 8 7 inch and press that seam allowance open on both sleeves. Okay, so now that this seam is put in and pressed open, okay, I'm going to go ahead and run my gathering stitches along the bottom. So all the way from just on this side of that little hemmed up edge there where I need to trim all of these little threads off so they're not in my way. Two rows of gathering stitches all the way across the bottom of both of my sleeves. All right, now that those are in, I'm actually going to do my gathering and my cuffs now before I put the sleeves on. I just think that's going to be a lot easier. I do not have these interfaced. Um, they are cut on a diagonal. So these are going to be more like a bias type of a band than a cuff, okay? And I think if we do them the way that they show on here, hmm, yeah, we're just going to make this more like a bias tape. And I'm so it'll have like a little bit of it sticking out around the gathers, if you can see, but not a whole lot. So what I'm going to do is fold my little band in half so I know where the midpoint is. And I'm going to match that right sides together with the midpoint on my sleeve down here. Okay. And stick the edge of my band out. Oh. I think they're going to call for a 3 8 or 5 8 inch. Yes, they are. So that's fine. Sticking it out about like that. Okay. On that side and this side also. 
just pinning that in place. And then I need to pull these gathering threads and there's going to be a lot of gathers. So all of this out here is going to get cinched into like about four inches here. Okay, so let me give all of these pulled and then I'll be back. Okay, I've got it gathered and it's about the most extreme amount of gathers I can get in there. I have it smushed together as hard as I could and it just barely fits. So there you go. I am going to go ahead, go over to my sewing machine, looking at the sleeve side so I can make sure everything's behaving as I sew it. I'm going to sew straight down here at 5 8 of an inch all the way, making sure I lock in all of those little gathers where they need to be. Okay, so I have it sewn on. If you can see, now I need to tell you what I'm going to do here is not what they show in the instructions. I'm, you know, going rogue. This is the right side of my fabric, okay? It's sticking out out here. What I'm going to be doing is, let's say I fold this completely in half. I know where that midpoint is, okay? I am just going to fold it like so. Basically folding up about 5 8 of an inch here. And it's going to be long enough to just barely cover or go beyond where all of those gathers are, okay? And I'm just going to stick a pin over here. And when I go to my sewing machine, I'm going to do a row of stitching right here. Okay, so here is that edge. I'm just going to stitch right here. It's only about an inch long on both sides so that then I can flip that around to the wrong side. Okay, so I'm going to do that on both sides of both of my sleeves. Okay, like that. Put my pin in, go stitch it, and I will be right back. Okay, so I've got that done. I'm just going to clip some of that extra off there. Okay, flip the whole thing right side out. And on the inside, I'm going to pin this fold here so it lines up with that stitching line from before. Okay, and when I am going to whip stitch this down. While I'm doing that, I'll just tuck that little edge in so it won't be sticking out there, okay? But I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Flip it right side out. And pin it down on this side. And then if I pull it apart, hopefully everything else will line up. I'm just going to pin it also in that midpoint there. So far so good. I think it's looking pretty nice. And I'm also going to pin it midway on each side. The gathers inside of this little band are extremely thick. But we're just going to let them stay there because that's, you know, the entire body of this band down here is all of those gathers inside of it. Okay, so with that pinned, I'm just going to come back. This is the inside of my sleeve and just whip stitch that down going across so it won't be visible on the outside. Okay, so it's been a little bit, but I'm back up here and I want to show you I do. Oops, let me turn my light on. Maybe that will help. Okay, I do have this whip stitch down on the inside. Okay, it looks very nice on the outside. And before I attach this to my sleeve, I'm going to go ahead and do the button. And I can show you on this one, this is what it's going to look like. I have the button, so it's kind of like right in the center. It's one of those vintage buttons. And if you're going to use them, try to dig out that little stone because that old glue will dry out. So if you can pop it out and put some fresh glue in, that's always a good thing. Um, so the way that I'm doing this is I'm making a little thread loop for my buttonhole and I'm go I want my button to be on the front and the button loop to be on the back. So if I look, this is the side with my pen, so I know this is the side of my little cuff thing that's the back, right? 
So that way when I'm going to button it, you know, I can put the front over the back and stuff like that. So I'm going to work on my little loop first and I'm just going to get a length of thread. What is that? About 24 inches or so. This is, this is just regular thread, but if you have a thicker thread that matches, you know, so much the better. Um, this is just actually some old soap that I'm pulling it through. It's a very oily soap. It seems to help a lot. And I am going to double my thread. Pull that one out. Thread up my needle, double it, and tie a knot down here at the end. Like so. Wrap it around your finger and push it through. Okay. So the way that I'm going to do this is I want to kind of hide my knot. So I'm just going to slip it in from where there's an opening between my little whip stitches here. Slide it in that way and then bring it out right about here, if you can see. Okay. And that way I can just get that little knot to be tucked inside and it's invisible that way. All right, so then I'm going to want to do a loop that's big enough for my button to go through. So I found something that's, you know, just slightly smaller than my button, which is my marking pen. So I'm just going to kind of hold that in place with one hand. Well, actually, I'm going to put that down for one second while I take my first stitch over here. Okay. And instead of cinching it up all the way, I'm going to stick my pen in here and pull it around that pen. Come back on this side. This is hard to do with the camera. Take another stitch. Make sure that that thread is also going over my pen. Come on now. Okay. So I've got two loops. I want at least one more because that will be a total of six threads coming around here. And I think that that will be pretty good to work on. So I'm going to come back on this side, stitch it through. And now I have a loop of three doubled, so six threads here. And now I'm going to stick my needle through the big loop, okay, and then put it back through my thread loop, and that's going to make a little, almost like a little crocheted buttonhole kind of stitch. And I'm just going to keep doing that all the way around until I have it full of my little backed crocheted stitches, okay. So I don't know if you can see, see them piling up on here. So here's one close up shot. I just put my needle through it. Okay. And as I'm pulling before it comes all the way, I go back, put my needle through this loop and pull it in like so. Okay. And so I just need to go all the way around with those. Okay. So hopefully, it will focus and you can see that's my little loop there. So I've got my thread coming out. So this is the inside here. I'm just going to come in and with my needle cinch it in and I'm going to make probably a few back stitches. One, two, three going this direction and then just to tie it all off I stick one in at a 90 degree angle underneath it come out over here after tightening it up and then I can just clip the thread right there okay so that's going to be my little loop and then for the button I'm going to sew the button right on the edge right here because I want it to look like it's kind of centered in between the two. So like this, all right? So if you can see, I just sewed the button right dead center there. So it's gonna hang out there. And this is a pretty small cuff. Um, let me stick this aside. I don't even know. I can, I can put my hand through it, um, but it doesn't have a whole lot of play. 
but I think since I can put my hand through it, I'm not going to have to button it and unbutton it, so that's going to be nice. So let me go ahead and sew the button on this side. Okay, I want to see how these sleeves are going to work here because I think they might be a hair small. Don't know. Um, but I've got my blouse here. Obviously, this is the back and this is the front. And I'm going to put my sleeve down on it, right side down, making sure I'm using the back sleeve, which has my pin on it. So then I'm going to pin this center point to my shoulders up here. And let's see how everything else is going to work together here. I do have my gathering threads. I'm not sure how much I'm actually going to need to adjust those. So on each side, I'm just going to pin it straight to the uh, sleeve to my, my garment at, up to the point where my gathering threads start, which is where the notch is. Okay, so there's one on this side. And over here, it goes right here, okay? Now, let's take a look. How much do I have to gather? Not a whole lot, honestly. I think it's actually gonna fit together almost exactly. So I'm just gonna go ahead and pin it on. And uh, let me get this other side pin just to make sure that it is also fitting well. But. Uh, for right now, it's looking like the front side is fitting uh, just about perfectly. On the back side, I did have to give a little tug to my gathering stitches, just a little bit, not very much at all, but usually if there's gonna be any ease worked in, it will be on the back side, you know, just so you can move your arm and shoulders around a little bit. So let me get this tugged in. Everything matched up well. And actually, I think I might have tugged it a little too much there. Um, go over to my sewing machine and sew this whole arm in at 5 eighths of an inch. Okay, I wanted to show you, after I sewed it around once, I came back and I sewed it a second time. And because of the nature of what I had, the linings, all of the serging and everything, it was a lot of bulk in here. So I just came back and trimmed, you know, fairly close to that second row of stitching, which should keep it from wanting to into this. Um, I feel like it's very strong and everything. Part of me wants to come back and just surged over that, but it's not going to be a problem. It's, it's not going to come apart or anything, so I might just leave it. But I wanted to show you what the sleeve is looking like here. So at the very top where my shoulder is, it is sewed together for a couple inches. And then it is open all the way down to the bottom where the cuff is. So I'm going to have a lot of arm showing right here. Okay, so I've got my sleeves on, but I did just did a really quick try on the bodice thing just to see how it goes. And it's weird. Um, you know, very, very deep and plungy here. But there's something really bizarre about the way these sleeves are set in here and the way that they're pulling like right here. And it feels very not right and I don't know I don't know I, I love the idea of the sleeves but there's just something not right and I can't put my finger on it and you know letting you know it's probably about 9 30 at night and it's probably not a good time for me to make huge judgment calls on this because my gut says well shoot just make it a sleeveless thing cut these off you know find the edges and have just a lovely sleeveless garment because it's just, I mean, it doesn't look terrible, but it feels weird to me. This whole thing, it's just feeling not right. So I'm going to set it aside, um, call it a night, come back tomorrow with fresh eyes and see if there's anything I think I can do with it um, because like I said, I like the idea of the sleeves, but there's just something about the way that this is is drafted. It, it's not fitting my body at all. And usually they do. They usually, this part up here, I usually don't have a problem with. So I will see you in the morning. 
Good morning. So slept on it and I'm glad I did because I decided in the middle of the night that most of my problems were coming because at the top of my sleeve where I had it closed up, I was deforming everything. So I opened that up on both sides and let me explain what happened. Okay, so this sleeve is odd because it's very wide at the bottom, but at the top, it's like a regular set-in sleeve, okay? And for some reason, when I just cut up the middle, I wasn't even paying attention, and I thought it would be more like a full sleeve, which, you know, proportionally, if it's a fuller sleeve at the top, instead of these coming, you know, in that hard, they just come up a little bit, and then they have a big wide top, and then down. And just slicing this down the middle, is no problem because there's so many gathers up here it's going to make up the difference in my little hem that I did. On this one, not so much. So when I took that down the middle and I took over an inch out when I did my little narrow hem down each side, that made this already narrow piece here even narrower. Okay, And because of that, well that's a little extreme, but because of that it was pulling the front part in a little bit. Plus, when I was just putting it on and kind of like holding it in place, I was wrapping these a lot farther than they were designed to be. And so I was kind of like pulling it too far this way. So the combination of the sleeve thing and pulling it way too crosswise, that's what was giving me my weird fitting issues. So this morning I opened up my sleeve and what that's going to do is allow it to open up. So instead of, you know, because I still have my arm, my shoulder and everything is still nice and curved. But instead of having a sleeve that's like this inside of a shoulder like that, now it's kind of like divided like a tulip. And so everything can open up a lot more. I think that's going to work. I tried it on really quick. It's going to work, I think. The only thing is, be aware. This is an extremely wide neck, extremely low cut, okay? I am just planning on having to use that double stick dressing tape along this edge just to hold that in place so that, you know, nothing wants to get too extremely far away. But honestly, that's what they do when you see all of the gala gowns and everything like that. They are all just so taped into place. It's, you know, just what it is. So I'm not stressing about that. So with my sleeves opened up, it's actually really pretty. And I think I am ready to go ahead and get my skirt put on. Um, I just, let me do a little bit of cleanup around these armholes. I am gonna go ahead and serge that raw edge just because I think that that would look better, at least for me. And then we'll get started matching up the skirt. So before I do anything, I need to run my gathering stitches along the waist area, my big skirt here. I am going to be putting a thicker thread in the bobbin, just because I'm going to do one long set of gathering stitches. So starting at this end, where my little hemmed edge is, going all the way over here, two rows. Let me put those in and I'll be right back. Okay, so if you remember, I am one panel shorter than the instructions actually call for. But that's fine with me. And when I'm putting this on, this top part's going to stick out just a little bit, but at this 5 8 inch point, it's going to match up. I will deal with this later. But for right now, I'm just going to go ahead and stick a pin right here. I've got a lot of layers going on there. All right, now my side seam is going to match up with the midpoint of my side piece because there's front, middle, and back, okay? So this is the middle of my middle piece, which I am matching up with my side seam here. And then, oops, I did the wrong one. This is my side seam here. Heavens, that was almost a disaster, huh? Okay. Alrighty. 
So this is my back and if I fold that in half I will find my center back right here and I'm just going to stick a little pin right there to mark that and this next piece this here is my back piece so I'm going to find the center back on that and match that up here and then just do the same thing on the rest of it matching up that center panel to my side seam and then the front as it should be and just start pulling my threads um, this on the right side I have regular threads on the wrong side I have these super threads it's like an army coat kind of thread it's very strong so I'm just going to get started getting all of this put together here um, give it a pull and I'll show you what it looks like when I have it all gathered up Okay, I've got it gathered on not a tremendous amount of gathers now understanding that I have one less panel on each side than the other uh, pattern intended you know because I only cut out two side pieces instead of four but it's it's pretty nice because this is a circle skirt it's a lot more flared at the bottom than the top so I'm going to go ahead go over to my machine put a regular bobbin back in and sew it at five eight seven inch starting here going all the way across and I'll be right back okay so I just pinned it on here as you can see very dramatic neckline extremely dramatic I must say um, we've got our sleeves over here that are open in the back I feel like the skirt is really heavy um, I'm going to do a second row of stitching on this waistline so I did one at five eighths I'm going to come back and do another one just slightly in you know probably half an inch and I might even tack it into place I'm not too sure yet but it's a very heavy skirt I want to make sure nothing happens there but remember I am going to have that big sash and overskirt to go over this and I'll show you that in a second but first let me just reinforce that hemline I mean that waistline okay so at this point the skirt is on and I'm going to be putting two big hooks on and I've got these heavy duty pant hook and eyes they are lovely and they're very secure so I'm going to be using those one on each side so let me see over here off camera I quickly tried it on and it's fabulous I must say it is fabulous um, I put a pin where I want the very edge of my wrap to hit okay so I'm just going to measure that from the side seam so that I can match it up on the other side and it looks like it's three inches from the side seam so if I come over here I could only do it on the outer one because you know the inner one was not visible so I'm just going to come over here and put a pin on this side okay knowing that this is underneath so if I lay this down let's see if I can do this in front of the camera okay and when I did it I had this one over here okay so I want to put it so that on this side there's going to be a little hook that comes into an eye right here on this side I put my pin in pretty deep so that we can see it from the back because I'm going to be putting the pin on this side underneath so just so there's no confusion I'm going to go ahead and put this pin on the inside here and take the outside one out Oops, looks like I got extra fabric cut in that fold hang on okay so right here I'm going to be putting one of my big eyes and I'm going to be sewing it you know pretty strongly and I have my seam allowances pressed down and over here on the very edge I just trimmed it so it won't be visible and ran a lighter over the edge so it won't unravel this is not going to be thrown in the washer several times so I think that will be fine okay so I'm gonna where did I put my little eye I'll find it again but anyway 
I'm going to be straddling the seam line with this so it's going to be part underneath part above because I want it my hook to be exactly over that seam line. So let me get this sewn over here and then on this part right underneath here I'm going to sew this hook and I'm going to place it so that the edge of the hook is not visible but it's just barely underneath here. Okay, so then this can come over and latch there. So let me get these put on first and then we'll deal with the underneath. I want to show you, I'm going to be using this Secura thread I've had for quite some time, but it's a very, very strong button thread and it has like a fusible glue on it. So once you're done, if you, you know, tap it with a hot iron, it'll like glue all those threads together so that hopefully it will never want to come off, you know, or not come off like if a knot comes loose or one thread gets cut, the glue is supposed to hold the rest of them together enough that it's not going to unravel and come loose. That's the thought, so that's what I'm gonna be doing. Okay, we are almost to the end of this project and the last thing I wanna do is deal with this overskirt. Now I just left the salvage edge down here at the bottom, but I need to cut that off. And I am thinking I'm just gonna trim. I'm not actually gonna hem this because I want it to be very ethereal, you know? And the netting itself is not going to fray. And I do have my little surged edge over here. So I am just gonna come in and actually kind of do a fancy cut a little bit around the very bottom of all of this embroidery not coming terribly close you know but just working myself around the bottom pieces so that it has kind of an organic kind of look to it at least that's my thought right now it is you know a few yards long so this could take me a while so give me a moment Okay, with it cut, I am singeing the edges just because it gives it a little bit of definition, you know? It's not going to fray if I don't, but I kind of like that little dark edge that the little singed nylon has. So this is just a design choice at this point, but you know, I think it's kind of fun. So I'm going to go ahead and get this done and then we're gonna try it on. you have to imagine it with the right hair and the right makeup and the right you know ambiance and everything but she's very danceable very movable you know and it's going to be a indoor and outdoor fall wedding in Chicago so you have to be kind of prepared for any kind of weather so I think that this is going to do it and yes it is an extremely big exposed neckline but like I said I don't have tape on right now the actual day yeah I'll put the little tape on just to make sure these aren't going to go crazy when I'm doing things and yes it does show some some cleavage but I don't think it's a grotesque amount if you know what I mean and I really love these sleeves I love having you know this part covered up but having the big flowiness and I've also seen them 
where they have it kind of like a little something something here in the middle. And I decided not to do that, but I can go back and do it. So anyway, I hope you liked it. Whenever the big event does come, I will throw some pictures of it up so you can see her dress, you know, which is the big secret and everything. And uh, yeah, there you go. Back to normal clothes next time. So I hope you liked it and I will see you then. Bye bye. <laughs>